Playwright makes it really easy to debug failing tests by providing screenshots and recordings and trace files. But how do we access those if we're running our Playwright tests in Azure Pipelines? Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at how we can view the Playwright picture files, images, videos, all of that from our tests when we're running inside of Azure DevOps. Yeah, and we, we've done a similar video to this with GitHub Actions, and I'll link to that in the show notes. Um, but what I wanted to show here is um, the experience that you get when you run those tests inside of Azure Pipelines and how the those attachments, the screenshot files and the trace files get um, associated with a specific test case that failed. Um, so let's just take a look at this little sample application that I have here. It's it's just a, an ASP.NET application, kind of like an out-of-the-box one, where I've added a few, couple of Playwright tests. So these tests are really simple. Uh, it's just my test suite. And um, there's two tests, example one and example two. One is designed to pass, and the other is designed to fail. We're not really testing anything super useful, but we just go to the main page, and we uh, get by role, the, get the heading, and check to see that um, it says welcome. So we're trying to find a heading that has the name welcome and expecting that to be visible on the page. And then the second example, we're expecting the heading to be not welcome. So the heading on the page can't be both of those. So one of these is always gonna fail. And um, what does that look like when it fails in, in an Azure pipeline? So my pipeline is super simple too. Um, all we're doing is so we're running on Ubuntu latest and my script is to um, install and run npm install to install my dependencies. Um, install the, the playwright dependencies, which you do by calling npx playwright install. And then we do npx playwright tests, so that goes and actually runs the tests, which the way I have playwright configured, it will go and spin up my, an instance of my um, ASP.NET application. And then I publish the test results. So the output of my playwright tests will be a JUnit results file and I'm going to publish that over to uh, Azure DevOps Pipeline. So we will go and run that. Okay, so my pipeline has failed as I expected it to because one of those tests should have failed and magically we're up a monster here. James has joined us, which is exciting. Whoa, I materialized. <laughs> So when I click here, I can see that the uh, the tests have failed. And um, if I look at the console output, I can get some information here about which one failed. Uh, but then I'm just like reading a log file and it's kind of hard to, to visualize what happened there. Uh, but I can also go to the test tab and here I see um, that there are two tests that ran. One of them failed and I can click on that. I can just to show the one that passed, I can see that uh, example one passed, but example two failed. And when I click on it, I'll just make that a little bit bigger here. I get the the console output uh, and stack trace here showing me where the failure was. Uh, but the interesting stuff is if I go over to the attachments tab, I can actually see a screenshot of what the page looked like when it failed. I can download a video. And the thing I love about Playwright is that I can download a trace file. And with that trace file, I can go to trace.playwright.dev and I can just drag that trace file over and I can see the, the history of everything that happened for that test. So I can see that we went to that page and then that we were expecting uh, this particular locator here to be visible, the heading with the name not welcome to be visible and that that eventually timed out after five seconds and it wasn't able to find it. I, we've talked about this before, but I just absolutely love this Playwright trace because I can actually go back and inspect what the DOM looked like at that point in time during the test, which makes it so much easier to identify um, what it is that went wrong. So I can see that my heading here had the text of welcome, and that's not what I was expecting. A little bit of a silly example, but gives you a bit of an idea of how useful that can be. And that's it. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Um, I think the builds 
where I spend most of my days. Now we we have photographic capture of failed tests, but mm. it's not correlated with the test other than just by the name of the file. So right. it, it can be tricky to track down where that is. So this integration is really, really nice. Yeah, and then you also get the like the test pass rate and everything too, right? So you can go back and kind of see the history here of when it failed and when it succeeded and then drill into the specific instances where it failed and, and then go and view the attachments and see why it was failing. So yeah, it's super useful, especially when you're operating at like a big scale with these things. So when you only have two tests, it's not so hard, but when you have thousands yeah. of tests, it becomes very hard to <laughs> correlate that back to what exactly happened. Yeah, we definitely have uh, in the high five digits of tests for every run. So, for this to work, uh, you just have to make sure you're on the the latest version of uh, Playwright for the JUnit uh, files to to work when they're being consumed by the publish um, test results task in Azure Pipelines. Other than that, it just works out of the box. And, now, there's, and, a, there's a little bit more to this than you're telling, though. This didn't always used to work, right? <laughs> it did not exactly work out of the box. Uh, this was something that, so I'm on the Azure DevOps team, um, which I think is something I'm required to point out um, <laughs> when I'm doing social media videos. Uh, and this was a not project. Not paid I, sponsorship. <laughs> no. So this was my project for the last year's annual hackathon. Um, like the Microsoft wide hackathon. So I added support for, I updated the published test results task so that it could consume attachments from JUnit files and then also made a change to the, the Playwright JUnit reporter so that it uh, made that a little easier to consume with the, the attachments that it was embedded in there. Yeah, really, really nice. I'm sure it's a, a great advantage for a huge number of people running tests like this. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. Remember to like, comment, and share, and we'll see everybody on the next episode. Bye. Bye.